G'day champions, it's Stuart Stone here from Health and Fitness Over 40 and today we've got a very, very powerful video for you with regards to depression, anxiety, suicide. Three of the biggest, biggest problems in the Western world these days and three of the biggest problems that affect men specifically. In fact, men's suicide is at three times the rate of women's. We have men coming back from war with PTSD and PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is going up in the general population. And why are we talking about that specifically today? Well, to be brutally honest, because the mainstream methods of antidepressants and mainstream counseling doesn't work very well. So what are we going to talk about? Well, we've got some fun topics for you today. We're going to talk about magic mushrooms, psilocybin. We're going to talk about ecstasy, molly, MDMA. And we're going to talk about ayahuasca and DMT. And what's the common theme running through all of these herbs, mushrooms, chemicals? Number one, they're all illegal. Number two, they are way more effective than the mainstream at helping people. And number three, we need to raise awareness to help people who are on the edge and struggling and being let down and not being helped to find a better, safer, more effective alternative for their mental health and well-being. So let's get into it. If there's a piece of research that you like the look of, just hit pause on the video, read through the research, and as always, in the description box below the video, there's a list of all the research. You click the link and it takes you to the original article. That way you can look at it if it's something that inspires you. So psilocybin, which is magic mushrooms, this paper is the role of psilocybin in the treatment of depression. So what they found was that it's very effective as a therapeutic agent and results in a reduction of depressive symptoms. And not just at the time of taking the mushrooms, but one week after and at three months after treatment. In other words, you're not dependent upon this as a medication you need to take day to day. You can take this sporadically or in some of these studies just on three occasions and the effects are positive for months and in some cases even years. Now that would really stuff things up if you're a pharmaceutical company. And I'm not saying that's the reason why these things are illegal, but hey, it's something to think about. So again, let's look further forward. So there's growing evidence that psilocybin may be useful in unipolar de depression. And, um, and psilocybin attenuates the amygdala in the brain in response to threat-related visual stimuli. So in other words, decreased threat is seen, so that can help with anxiety. The effect of psilocybin on empathy and moral decision making. This research paper just blows my mind on the potential effects with sociopaths, psychopaths and even narcissists. Now obviously I'm not a psychologist, I'm also not a researcher, but just thinking outside the box and dealing with people who have these various disorders, it may help rebalance their brain chemistry and bring, bring them back to a more functional member of society. But anyway, so psilocybin, impaired empathic ability, in other words, the ability to see and feel another person's pain and relate to them from a place of care. Psilocybin significantly increased emotional but not cognitive empathy, and in contrast, moral decision making remained unaffected by psilocybin. So it has effects on the ability to emotionally relate to other people. Powerful. Again, psilocybin, so when you hear psilocybin, just think magic mushrooms. Produces substantial and su sustained decreases in depression and anxiety in patients with life-threatening cancer. These people are either terminal or have a life-threatening disease. They're scared, they're terrified, they don't know if they're going to come through, they don't know if they're going to die, they're not sure what's on the other side of death. My moral compass just says, give them the drugs, reduce the anxiety, let them have a positive outcome emotionally, and hopefully physically they also have a positive outcome. But again, from the research, psilocybin assists greatly with that anxiety, with more than 80% of the people endorsing moderately or greater increased well-being and life satisfaction. 
So this is a summary of that same study. So about 80% of the participants in the study continued to show clinically significant decreases in depressed mood and anxiety, with about 60% showing symptom remission into the normal range. So taking magic mushrooms gets rid of depression and anxiety. Wow. Obviously, that's not literally what they're saying, but there's a, a massive swing in the right direction. 83% of these people reported increases in well-being or life satisfaction, and 67%, so two-thirds of the participants, reported ex the experience as one of the top five meaningful experiences in their lives. That just blows me away. And about 70% of these people reported the experience as one of their top five spiritually significant lifetime events. Something that powerful, in my opinion, should probably not be considered illegal. Yes, it might need to be administered and used in a more controlled setting, but hey, these are people who essentially have life-threatening cancer. They're terrified of dying. Give them something to ease their pain. Psilocybin, again, as a treatment for mental health conditions. Now, this is quite a long study and summarizes various different things. So suicidality and depressed mood. So we're looking at a group. This is not a small group. This is not a small study. A lot of these uh, studies on psychedelics are looking at small study groups, partly because of the illegal nature of it, also partly because of the funding that the researchers get and the limited amount of the substance that the researchers get to do their studies with. But this is a, a large study looking at a population study of 191,000 people and people using only psilocybin, 7,500 of them, or over 7,500 of them, and then psilocybin and other psychedelics, and there were another 12,700 people in that group. But what they found with the people using magic mushrooms, they were less depressed, and they had less suicidal thoughts than any other group. So that's people using psilocybin and other drugs, or the general population. So hey, massive thumbs up for psilocybin. From the same study, anxiety disorders, Patients served as their own control. In other words, they received niacin, vitamin B3, and they also received psilocybin. They didn't know which one was which. The reason niacin was used was because they get some of the same flushed feelings with niacin and with psilocybin. So it helps the patient or the, the clinical subject not be able to determine whether they're part of the placebo group or part of the real group. But anyway, anxiety significantly decreased at one and three month post-treatment intervals in the psilocybin group. So again, you're having one treatment with the magic mushrooms and the effects are still felt one and three months down the road. This is not a drug. This is something that, you, that actually alters the brain chemistry long term. So again, from a pharmacological or pharmaceutical company point of view, if you give one drug and you only need to take it once or twice or three times in your lifetime and problem solved, it's not a very good business model. So I don't know. Again, I'm a, I'm a bit of a cynic, but maybe that's why it's not part of the mainstream use for these conditions. But let's continue on. I'll remove my cynical self and we'll just let's look at the research. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. So again, it's a small study sample, but nine patients with OCD. Again, it's formally classified and they received up to four different doses, small up to relatively large, although not the heroic dose that Terence McKenna talks about. But 88.9, so let's say near to 90% of patients showed a greater than or equal to 25% decrease in their symptoms at the 24-hour mark, and two-thirds had a greater than or equal to 50% reduction in their symptoms at the 24-hour mark of the testing. And the dose size didn't seem to affect the reduction in symptoms. So in other words, you can give these people a small amount and it's going to positively affect their brain chemistry long-term, or at least in this instance, after 24 hours because it wasn't a long-term study. Again, giving up smoking, very difficult in the mainstream model. We've talked about it in our The Easy Way to Quit Smoking videos 1 and 2, that mainstream, their best effort is about 16% success rate after 12 months. And what are we finding here? It's only 15 people, but hey, we're getting 80% of the participants remaining abstinent, not smoking, at the six-month follow-up point, and they've only had one small dosage of magic mushrooms. How cool is that? Continuing on, now we get to look at ecstasy or MDMA. And this study looks at PTSD and cancer-related pain. 
And yep, they found it was sufficiently successful for researchers to receive permission from the FDA, so the Food and Drug Administration, to train psychotherapists to deliver the counselling in association with the ecstasy. In other words, massive positive effects. And again, MDMA for subjects with chronic treatment-resisted post-traumatic stress disorder. So 20 patients in this case, they haven't responded to other means. The decrease in their PTSD scale scores were greater for the group that received ecstasy, excuse me, ecstasy than for the group that didn't receive it. And it was so effective, 83% in this case, that the placebo group was then offered the opportunity to receive the ecstasy and the therapy. And again, another pilot study and pilot studies because they're more sample sizes and a pilot study is pretty much there to say, we've got great results, time to do a bigger study, look at this on a grander scale. And those have not occurred even though six years have passed or five and a half years in this case as the study was com- well, published at the end of October 2012. So patients were assessed at baseline three weeks after the second and third ecstasy sessions. So there's only three ecstasy sessions here, which was the end of treatment, and then two months and one year follow-up. This is one of the longer studies that looks at one-year follow-ups. And what they found up found out that there was improvement at the one-year follow-up, and three ecstasy sessions were better than two. So again, this illustrates the need for further study into these psychedelic substances. So you know what? Let's look after our returning soldiers, our emergency service people who have been exposed to horrendous situations, who are struggling massively. Let's throw them a bone, look after these people, help them get healed and get some quality of life back. So ayahuasca administration was associated with fast-acting antidepressive effects in six patients. Then there was improvement at 1, 7, 14, and 21 days after the ayahuasca ceremony. They call it a drug. We don't even know whether it actually qualifies or classifies as a drug. So the results from this study, again, small sample size, but suggest that ayahuasca may have fast-acting and sustained antidepressive properties. This is a single dose. Again, it's something that makes a sustained change in the recipient. So it's not something that you're stuck on for the rest of your life, which I think is just absolutely wonderful. So again, how does it classify as a drug if it's not addictive? And again, another study, different study, single dose again, statistically significant reductions of up to 82% in depressive scores. Now, I don't know of any mainstream drug that has an 82% reduction in scores one, seven, and 21 days after a single dose, but hey. That's just my cynical side again. I'm going to drum at home. We should probably be asking our researchers, our medical profession, and our politicians why the heck this isn't being funded massively. Of course, the drug companies aren't going to do it. Why should they? It would create competition for them. They're not stupid. But why aren't our politicians and our medical profession, if they're truly interested in the best interests of you, me, and Joe Public, looking at this further and more deeply and more aggressively and helping our return servicemen and other people who have been exposed to horrendous situations and dealing with depression, which is essentially at epidemic proportions in the Western world. So there it is, guys. This is actually a literature review, this study. Of 151 studies, they didn't just look at junk research. That's one of the problems in research, especially small studies. A lot of it falls into junk category. They took the cream of the crop, the six best studies out of there, And they found that people who aren't responding to mainstream treatments, so these studies looked at treatment-resistant depression, anxiety and depression, and tobacco and alcohol dependence. And what they found was that ayahuasca, psilocybin, and LSD may actually be useful pharmacological tools for the treatment of drug dependence, anxiety, and mood disorders, especially in treatment-resistant patients. In other words, the mainstream approach has not worked, so why aren't we looking more at these approaches? Anyway, that's my rant. You can do with it what you will. Learn. You must remember these are currently considered illegal in the Western world. So, hey, if you want to get on a plane trip and go somewhere where it's not illegal, uh, or if you just want to go and see you know, the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, for example, and this stuff happens to be there, or even if you want to go and see Machu Picchu and just happen to be in Peru near the ayahuasca ceremonies, 
that's totally up to you. Of course, as with anything, you're an adult. The responsibility is on you. I'm not suggesting you do anything illegal. I'm suggesting you be smart and intelligent and responsible. So as a responsible, smart, intelligent adult, this is not medical advice. This is not health advice. This is raising awareness. And as an adult, do your own due diligence and speak to qualified people, whether it's your GP, your specialist, or your politician. Rant over. Okay, so for more information like this, you know what to do. You've heard me say it many times by now. Go over here, click on the red heart apple and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you ring the bell so that you get kept updated of our upcoming videos. And while you're at it, go down here into the description box below and give our Facebook page a like and we'll bring more gems of information straight to you very soon. Have a great day.